So I do research because it's what keeps me most engaged and interested. And I like the idea of solving problems that are broadly impactful. This paper had two kind of driving points that kind of came together. We've been developing non-toxic antibiotics and we needed better access to the cochlea to see it. And it's the first time that we've been able to image functional cells inside of the cochlea and not cause deafness. Aminoglycosides are an amazing antibiotic because they're broad spectrum, so they kill lots of different types of bugs. They're the most widely used antibiotic in the world. And yet you find hearing loss in anywhere from 20 to 60% of the people that are used on. When we started working on aminoglycosides, we took a really simple approach. If we don't let the drug get into the hair cell, then it can't kill it. So we couldn't study this in vitro. We needed the in vivo system to do it. Developing the surgical approach took around seven years to do. It wasn't until Jin Kyung came to the lab that it was a primary project that she focused on. Just imagine, you have the cochlea, which is the hearing organ, is encased in the hardest bone in the body, and that's buried inside another set of bones. You can't drill through the bone because if it loses pressure by putting a hole in it, then you go deaf. And there's this tiny membrane, and by keeping this membrane intact, the pressure stayed in. Now, basically, we have a window into the cochlea where we can look at individual cell function. So the question is, how does aminoglycoside antibiotics get there to affect the hair cell? So when we got that system, there are several ideas out there about how the aminoglycoside could get in. And the only way that anything gets into this chamber is to be transported. In the literature, megalin receptors have been found in the kidney. And when you use a blocker for the megalin receptor, it protects the kidney from toxicity of aminoglycosides. There were a couple of papers that say that megalin receptors are also found in the inner ear. And so that's how we decided that seems like a, a good first test. And it turned out to be accurate. We need to learn how to prevent the hearing loss and we need to learn how to repair it. And where I can contribute initially is in the preventing side of it.